Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we are going to be exploring some of the new updates made to Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, the official release. We'll first start off by taking a look and comparing and contrasting some of the new features with 18.04 LTS, and I have both Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and 18.04 LTS installed, so we can easily reference both. But I'm excited about some of the updates that they've made to 2004. So I have the lock screen in front of me here in 2004 where they've made uh, some changes to. Now the background is blurred and it's blurred with the background of the current user that's logged in. And when we go ahead and want to log in with our user, it has a smoother transition. And we'll compare that to uh, 1804. Here in 1804, you can see that the font is quite a bit bigger and it doesn't have that smooth transition like it does in the other one. You kind of have the shifting of screens. And of course the user login is a little different as well. So let's go ahead and unlock this one as well. As far as the install process goes, it's very similar to 1804. Not much has changed, but they have moved around a couple options, specifically where you can choose to install the ZFS partitioned system or set up a LVM with encryption. ZFS wasn't really an option in 1804, but it was an option in 1910. And the last thing I noticed is that the installer did seem quicker in 2004 compared to 1804 installing the overall packages in the base system, which is very nice. It's a nice improvement. Let me know if you notice a change in the comment section below, if you've given it a try. And if you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more updates. And right off the bat in the desktop, it's very similar to what it was before. Although you can see there's an updated icon set here for the Yaru theme. And if we open up files, let's go ahead and compare that. And in 1804, you can definitely tell the difference in the icons. And when you open up the files, there's a bit of a difference with the default icon set here in comparison to 2004. And you can even see the background of the file browser is a little bit different. In 2004 here with the standard theme, we have a little bit of a darker backdrop for the top title portion, as well as the side over here on the left. Also, one thing you'll notice is that the icon sets are slightly bigger in Ubuntu 2004 than in 1804. And one thing I thoroughly enjoy is uh, something in settings here. If we open up our settings, you can see that they don't have a dock section anymore. Instead, they have this appearance tab, which allows us to select between different window themes of the Yaru theme. And they have three options, the standard option, which is just a little bit of a blend between the dark and the light. As you can see, some of the title bars are darker, and then it has a white backdrop here versus everything's dark in this one with or orange accents. And then on the left-hand side, the light theme, everything including the title bar is of a light white color. You also have your other options here available to you that used to be available under a section called Dock and not anymore on 2004. You can see that you have the same exact options minus the fact that you don't have these theme switching available to you. So since I like the dark theme so much, I'm gonna go ahead and actually select that and then we'll, and we'll be using it just to kind of explore what it looks like. Here, if we open up the file browser again, you can see how the backdrop has changed and how everything looks much darker. In comparison to 1804, if we also open it up, you can see that everything is quite different, including the icon set. As you can tell with the updated GNOME 3.36, that things look much more modern here in 2004, as well as the transitions are a lot smoother, which I've noticed across the desktop. One thing that's pretty apparent is if you hit the show applications icon in the bottom left, that all the applications come spawning out of the icon and swifting over to the right as they populate the display. And similar to when you close it off, they all come scooting back into the show applications icon. That's a neat little transition. In 1804, we really didn't have anything like that. It, they just came up and went away as soon as you hit the show applications icon. And another difference is when you hit activities, you can see that they've made the backdrop a little darker here as well as now when you go and select between various different open dialogues, you can see that you don't have a harsh orange border when selecting whatever dialogue you have open. In 1804, as you went through them, you can see that you did have this orange highlight around the entire dialogue and in the background, it is a little lighter. On the far right hand side, we have the ability to go ahead and select between workspaces still in 24, it's very similar, although you have a smoother transition between the two workspaces. And if you made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. On the top here, you can see that they went with the darker tone as well as in the backdrop here behind the icons, where in 1804, it was much more transparent and you can see the background a lot better here up at the top as well as behind the icons. They made some minor changes here when you click on the time and date. 
You can still see notifications, but what's really nice is you have this do not disturb feature where you can go ahead and turn off all notifications from the system in 20.04. And then on the right hand side, you can see that they've rounded off some of the edges in the widgets for the calendar. In 18.04, you really didn't have that do not disturb option, as well as the calendar didn't have any type of border at all. On the far right hand side, we'll see that we've switched the icons a little bit and kept everything else pretty much similar for the far right hand side where you can control the volume, the current network connection, as well as the user. Here in 2004, if we go, you can see that things are a little bit more condensed. We don't have those bulky icons at the very bottom here, but we still do have the option to go ahead, log out or power off the machine, as well as access to our settings, our current network connection, and still the volume control is much the same. With the updated GNOME 3.36, so now you have the option of turning on or off fractional scaling, but it does warn you it may increase the power usage and create lower speed or reduce the display sharpness. And then of course we have the option to go ahead and scale the screen now. Some other notable changes are in the App Store. So if we launch the Ubuntu Software Center, you can see that the editor's picks are now in focus here first, and then we have the subcategories available to us, which we can search through. Where in 1804, it was the opposite, where you had some categories available first, and then you had the editor's picks right underneath that. One other notable change is if you go ahead and select a package, you can see here that the source is the Snap Store for at least Chromium here. Whereas in 2004, we also have Chromium available, of course, but you can see that the source says uh, Snapcraft.io, and that's their default repo now, Snapcraft. But up here in the top right-hand corner, you can see that the channel, you can actually select between various different versions of the available package if it has different versions available. So at Snapcraft, we have the latest stable version available, which is currently the same as the latest uh, candidate available. And we also have a beta version available to us uh, as well. So you have version 83 here and then version 81 as the stable release. And if you want to be at the very edge of development, you can even see that they have version 84 available, which is currently being developed. This is a great thing because they allow some flexibility here in uh, the type of package that you want to install directly from the Ubuntu Software Center. Much of the rest of this store is very similar. We do have this little icon here, which allows us to sign in, sign out, and look at about Ubuntu Software Center. So it tells you the current version as well as gives credits of people who created it. Whereas in 1804, you have no such icon. They've also moved the magnifying glass to be able to search. So I'm just gonna search for, let's see, Visual Studio Code comes to mind. So I'm gonna search here. And then as you can see on the left-hand side, we have our search box available to us. And here in 2004, we have the icon on the left-hand side now, and I can search for Visual Studio Code in here as well. As you can see, it comes up first, and much of this looks very similar here. As you can see, not much has changed in the layout of how it presents the package to us between Ubuntu 2004 and Ubuntu 18.04. Of course, there was many packages that were updated as well as the kernel to 5.4. If we launch a terminal, we can check with uname r. We have the 5.4 kernel available to us, whereas in 18.04 we have the 5.3 currently available to us. 5.4 of course comes with better hardware support, including power savings improvements, as well as better support for USB 3.2. And when checking out the show applications, much of it is the same here with a similar type of layout. Icons are about the same size, but what's really neat is that you can actually drag and drop icons together to go ahead and create a subcategory or subfolder together. And as you can see, you can have multiple subcategories and even rename them to what you want. If you click on them, you can hit at the edit tab and make it called whatever you want and that's how it will show up in these groupings here on your show application screen. In comparison, since 1804 did not have GNOME 3.36 support, you can't just drag and drop icons together in order to make groupings. You can also get rid of groupings by dragging and dropping the icons back to show applications page. And one thing I've noticed is that some of the applications do get a little bit jumbled up until you relaunch the show applications dialog again. One other thing is now that they supply the vendor as well as the Ubuntu logo on the loading screen. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and check out the resources being used by the system. So let's do that with HTOP. So let me make this a little bigger for you so we can compare and contrast the two. And here we can see with a freshly booted up system, it's only been up for about a minute, we have around 711 megabytes of 
of physical RAM being used, as well as upwards of about 3% CPU usage with 122 tasks currently, 271 threads running, and you can see the various different types of applications and processes running in the background. And here in 1804, we've got about 1.08 gigs of memory usage, as well as between zero to 4% on the CPU cores. The total tasks running are 143, with 333 threads running, and you can see the various different processes in the background. Well, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the updates to Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support. What are your thoughts on it and did I miss anything obvious? Make sure to go ahead and put it in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. And as always, thanks for watching.